Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I got an overwhelmingly positive response on my video yesterday. Guys, I did a deep dive into the Bill Gates ID 2020 cashless society with a Ripple connection video. And a lot of you guys posted in the comment section how much you loved hearing a video like this, one of my best videos. You love videos like this. Uh, there were also some people that are like, you know, Working Money, I thought you were better than that. I'm a long time subscriber. I don't like conspiracy videos and I get it. I've always maintained that I do not completely believe in conspiracy theories, nor do I not believe in conspiracy theories. I always find myself on the fence. I feel like they can be more or less true and it's a spectrum. I feel like there are definitely avenues for the powers that be to gain more power and definitely reasons as well uh, for people to think this is all kind of hogwash. But, you know, I just like to kind of frame it as here are the things that exist. Take it for what you will. Believe as much of it as you wish. Reject as much of it as you wish. I am not here to tell you how to think you guys should be thinking for yourselves. I just wanted to mention that because I haven't really done a video like this, uh, at least not for a while. And this, I think, was one of the deeper dives uh, into the uh, Ripple and XRP cashless society connection with the Bill Gates ID 2020 project. So uh, thanks so much, guys, for letting me know, giving me your input on things. Positive and negative, I think we can all grow from that. Guys, this from Cryptopolis here, the Fed injects liquidity. Zombie companies are having solvency issues. An estimated 5 to 10 million jobs will be lost forever. What next, Fed? So, as we know, the beer flu is still impacting the U.S. economy. Here is a four-week moving average of initial claims. That's in blue. And the Wilshire 5000 price index is in red. Interesting to see the inverse relationship with this over the last couple of decades. We can see here, this is back in 1995, 2000, 2005, 2010. And now look at where we are here. The Fed printing money is not going to fix things. Uh, I saw this from jlynn143 at jlynn for you on Twitter. Uh, she sent me this. Trump announces executive order suspending regulations in pending the U.S. economy. So Donald Trump, eager to juice the staggering U.S. economy to boost his re-election bid, signed an executive order on Tuesday that he said is designed to help businesses recover from the beer flu outbreak. The president told his cabinet members during a White House meeting, the order gives you tremendous power to cut regulation. The order is about instructing federal agencies to use any and all authority to waive, suspend, and eliminate unnecessary regulations that impede economic recovery, Mr. Trump said before signing it with a large black felt pen. And we want to leave it that way. The U.S. economy is first and foremost of importance for Donald Trump. He ran on that platform in 2016. Uh, an election is coming up this November, although how are people going to be voting? Are we going to be going out in droves to community centers and schools to vote? Is the US government going to figure out an online way that we can do this? Money, money, money. It is important uh, for Donald Trump and for the US economy, the biggest economy in the world. Uh, so on the one hand, I understand this kind of uh, sentiment, but on the other hand, there still is a pandemic going on. And uh, as far as I know, the U.S. has some of the highest numbers around the globe. So, uh, I mean, what are you going to do? How can we conduct business and move money faster and more efficiently? Well, I can tell you how, Randy Zuckerberg. This is Mark's sister. That's right, the guy who does Facebook. We're hitting a point where we're breaking the current financial system and we need to create something new. Peter Pumpkin Eater down here on Twitter says, XRP, baby. This is an interesting little animation here with uh, Bitcoin kind of laboriously climbing the blocks and the new technology over here, XRP, jumping up and sending payments fast. Highly secure in three to five seconds with low fees. So there does need to be a new system. And here's another tweet from Randy Zuckerberg. I don't know if you guys remember this one back from March 18th, 2020, just a few months ago. I think Ripple will be really taking off in the next two years. The world order will be reshuffled using the blockchain technology. I think Asia will lead the pack. So Randy Zuckerberg, an advocate for faster payments, understanding uh, how the company Ripple will help this move along, especially in the United States, where right now the economy is taking a beating. And you got to think about Randy Zuckerberg for a second and who her brother is and how rich he is, how rich the family is. And the fact that she mentions a world order and how it will be reshuffled. So, you know, I don't like to dwell on things, but think about it for a second. Think about how it could relate to the bigger picture. Think about what you learned yesterday with ID2020, a cashless society and a ripple connection, and let your brain run with it. More interesting news here, guys. I saw this, 40 Bitcoin moved from a wallet 
possibly owned by Satoshi Nakamoto. So apparently a whale alert detected a transfer from a Bitcoin wallet, possibly owned by Satoshi. That's right. The Bitcoin address has been dormant since get this guys, February, 2009, when it received an initial deposit of 50 Bitcoin, the Bitcoin block reward at the time, since the inception of Bitcoin in 2009, the cryptocurrency has undergone three halvings. We know all that. This from Joseph Young. I am Joseph Young on Twitter. 50 BTC from February, 2009 is moving. That's just one month after the first Bitcoin block was mine. There are not a lot of people who can do this, perhaps close associates of Satoshi. My question is why, not who? is sending 50 BTC for the first time in more than 10 years. So it is not confirmed that it is Satoshi Nakamoto's wallet, although this must have been one of the first Bitcoin wallets back in February 2009, and it has laid dormant since. So people are presuming that it could be Satoshi Nakamoto's wallet. Interesting to say the least, could there be an uptick in the crypto market? Could they know something we don't know? Or is this literally just getting poised for another run after a BTC having because we know history tends to repeat itself. Uh, right now, Bitcoin trading only at 9,300. It dipped a little bit over the last couple of days, uh, or rather over the last day, coming all the way down here, reaching that $9,000 mark approximately, rebounding back up. Uh, but guys, what did I tell you? This is the hourly. Let me put it on the daily for you guys here. Ah, uh, and so Bitcoin hit that top, hit it again. I think we could see Bitcoin come back down again, even back down to 6,500. I do not think that is out of the cards. Before we see another rally up, let's look at XRP real quick here. Uh, we can see XRP doing the same kind of thing right now, training at 0.199 per XRP. So 50 Bitcoin moved from a wallet from back in February 2009. Something else to ponder, folks, with regards to this latest Bitcoin having and the crypto market as a whole. And guys, I saw this from XRP Arcade. This is uh, Leonidas's site. The Coil ecosystem grows with WordPress plugin and uphold integration. So Coil is a platform that provides an alternative method for creators to monetize their content online. As subscribing fans consume content the platform uses an open api called web monetization to stream micro payments if you guys didn't know already and now coil mentioned on twitter today we unveiled our web monetization wordpress plugin plus our newest wallet provider uphold offering access to over 50 currencies with bank connectivity in more than 35 countries so more support for coil members now there is a wordpress plugin integrated with uphold we know coil was a spring project so integrating the world of online revenue via XRP, just more great news for the ecosystem, uh, demonstrating how it is growing day after day. And guys, I saw this from Matthew Liny on Twitter, R3 partner Coin and DTM Global has also made a connection here. So they've joined together. Coin has signed a joint venture with Canada-based company DTM Global Holdings to deliver post-trade solutions to traditional exchanges and digital securities trading venues. As part of the joint venture, Coin will deliver post-trade solutions across DTM's Fintegration ecosystem of fintech and e-digital securities products for private and public sector enterprises. DTM will work closely with Coin to develop a custody and settlement solution for e-digital securities for partners, including the Metropolitan Stock Exchange of India. Coin will integrate with Venture Exchange DTM's trading platform with the MSEI that enables investors to trade in certain digital portfolios once they are listed on the exchange. Now we know Coin uh, connected with R3. Don't know if they will be settling with XRP, but they have the capability to. Uh, we also know that this is happening for, or the at least the example they're giving us was India. And over a year ago now, Ripple has stated that they do have 50% of India in their back pocket. At this point, it is likely a higher percentage and we keep seeing the ecosystem grow. Ripple, um, not too recently, but within the last several months, did open a new office in India or nearby, I believe. Geographically, I do believe they, they built a new office. I think it was either India or Pakistan, Bangladesh. I'm not sure entirely. I'm going off memory here, but this is great. More integration with world economies, more integration with different verticals, stock exchanges. For example, settling different asset of value transactions with XRP or the possibility even of using XRP through R3 is just game changing. And it looks as if the United States is moving towards blockchain. Guys, I gotta read you this. This is from Martin Volk. He sent me this on Twitter. US lawmaker proposes legislative groundwork for national blockchain strategy. So this is great for the United States of America. On Tuesday, US House Rep Brett Guthrie introduced a bill calling on the Federal Trade Commission to survey the prevalence of blockchain technologies across industry, government, and the globe. So guys, 
It's happening now. It's taking them a while, but it is happening. They are talking about it. Uh, the beer flu, I'm sure, as I've mentioned before, has uh, pushed this along for the United States government. If passed, the bill, which had no co-sponsors, when referred to the House Energy and Commerce Committee, would give the FTC two years to conduct the survey and further six months to advise Congress on what it learned. Guthrie calls for recommendations on state-level blockchain adoption, business sector blockchain adoption, blockchain development plans, risk mitigation strategies, legislative frameworks, and how to consolidate potentially prohibitive federal statutes. The recommendation package would effectively outline a comprehensive blockchain strategy for the United States. So this is what we need, guys. Federal sweeping legislation for blockchain regulation. So I guess there's two things here, cryptocurrency regulation and blockchain regulation. And they're kind of two sides of the same coin in a way. Uh, there are, uh, I'm sure, lots of differences, but also quite similar in a lot of ways. Uh, because cryptocurrency essentially uses blockchain to function. So some interesting information here, guys. I will leave this article in the description. And thanks so much, Martin, for tweeting this to me. And did you guys hear about this? I'm sure you did yesterday. Boom, look at the email I received. So uh, Equity Zen, uh, if you go to their website, you can get information on a possible Ripple IPO. You are receiving this notification because you have expressed interest in investing in Ripple through Equity Zen. Equity Zen will launch an investment opportunity in Ripple at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard on Thursday, May 21st. So guys, that is today. Who's interested in Ripple stock here? Uh, guys, I will link this in the description. This is Equity Zen. Learn more about Ripple stock. If you don't know anything about the company, they give you everything you need to know. Well, I'm sure a lot of us already know about the company. This is for investors that have a lot of money and very little time. They need the quick elevator pitch. Uh, as we call it in the film industry. But yeah, Ripple stock, definitely on my list, definitely on my radar uh, when it becomes available. And guys, I'm just going to point something out here. I wasn't going to do this, but uh, I was, I'm going to do this because I'm going to bring up Facebook stock here and let's see if we can go back all the way to the beginning when Facebook was introduced. Yes. Okay, great. Here's Facebook on the daily. And th okay, so May 18th, 2012, was when the original Facebook IPO was launched, okay? People were losing their minds over this, and it opened the day up at $42.05. And I don't want you guys to get trapped in this if you are planning on buying Ripple stock. This is what tends to happen. There is FOMO, there is excitement. The people that get in right at the beginning on day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, are usually overpaying for the stock, okay? We see a sell-off and buyers tending to struggle, make the price go back up again, and then another huge sell-off. What you guys need to do is wait, be patient. It wasn't until September that the price really kind of hit a bottom, came back up, found its double bottom, then a triple bottom, and then the price started to rise for Facebook stock. So once you guys can see uh, the price kind of fall in this level of support or a demand zone, that is when you should seriously start looking at purchasing the stock. Don't buy it on the first day or the second day or the third day. I think you get my idea here. So I would consider this zone just if we're going to go back in time here. I mean, I know hindsight is 2020, but this is a level of support. Okay, anywhere between $17.50 and $20.00. Okay, so anything under $20 essentially was a good deal for Facebook, and we saw that happen time and time again. It went under 20 in August 2012, then it went under 20 again in October 2012, and it went under 20 again in November 2012. That's when we know it's a demand zone, it's not piercing any lower than that, and then the trend went up from there. So give it some time, guys, if you are interested in purchasing Ripple stock when the IPO is announced. It is certainly something to think about, uh, and I've seen this firsthand with Facebook. When people were asking me, this was when I first started getting into stocks, actually. It was about uh, maybe six months before this. And then they were asking me, well, are you getting into Facebook? And I thought to myself, I might, but not today. Okay. And then I was, you know, I was focused on other things. You got to remember this was 2012. There were a lot of other opportunities uh, and Facebook was just the biggie and I don't like trading on hype. So I missed my opportunity. I'm not going to lie to you. I missed my opportunity on this. Uh, but there are many opportunities in the world. This is why I'm invested in cryptocurrencies. More importantly, why I'm invested in XRP. And so did you hear about this Ripple employee? Here's his opinion on an XRP investment. Guys, this is from the Daily Hodel. Is XRP a good investment? Yes and no, says Ripple's Josh Lin. Okay, what does he have to say about this? Josh Lin is a senior talent sourcer at Ripple, and it's unclear whether Ripple's efforts to boost the XRP ecosystem will boost the price 
of the cryptocurrency. So this is from Cora. He responded uh, to a question here. Lynn approaches a direct question on whether XRP is a good investment by drawing a line. So he's kind of answering it without really answering it. He says, yes and no, let me explain. Lynn says he's confident in his team at Ripple as well as the legitimacy the company is bringing to the cryptocurrency XRP but he's less certain whether those moves will actually impact the crypto market. Ripple is driving more utility and volume to the XRP ecosystem, which in theory should increase the intrinsic value of XRP. But whether the bid ask price will reflect that, I have no idea. So essentially he's saying, I don't know. I shrug my shoulders, I don't know. Lynn is also unsure about the future of the regulatory environment surrounding Ripple's native cryptocurrency. So this gets in to the whole SEC stuff and whether FIs and other institutions can hold XRP legally, and that will definitely have an impact on whether XRP price will, could, should go up or not. So as of now, this is kind of a non-answer to me. It's a bit of a question mark. This sounds to me Josh Lynn doesn't really know, and so he's not giving people faith, nor is he giving people faith. He says he's very conservative with his portfolio. He allocates a small amount of capital that doesn't keep him up at night, to five different crypto assets and then the other 95% of his portfolio, so I'm guessing the small amount is 5%, 95% of his portfolio to investment opportunities that he says currently offer a better risk reward profile. There are more asymmetric opportunities in the world today aside from crypto. These are opportunities that yield five to 10 times returns and they currently offer better risk to reward profiles. Uranium, anyone? It's funny that he says that because I am actually invested in uranium stock and crypto since the crypto market is still so nascent. So uranium, interesting, interesting, interesting. I've heard it from other people. I got into uranium in 2015. Not that this is a uranium channel, but just to give you guys some perspective on where my investments are as well. So that to me is a bit of an unsatisfactory answer. Don't you guys think? Whenever I hear these wishy-washy answers, I always have to go to the source, okay guys? And this is from David Schwartz, September 2017. We're not there yet, but we're moving towards it. I'm gonna just read you a few lines of this tweet here. I'm not gonna read you the full thing. David Schwartz writes, the most obvious benefit to Ripple of an increased price for XRP is that it increases the value of Ripple's XRP. Gonna go down here. Indirectly, more value almost always means more liquidity and trade volume. XRP already has each of the other characteristics needed to be a good intermediary asset, but it will be initially limited by the available liquidity. And so we've heard Ripple saying, we need to improve liquidity. Well, David Schwartz is saying with a higher price for XRP, that will inherently improve liquidity. Greater liquidity will give Ripple more flexibility to target larger corridors. This is the other thing we're noticing. Ripple wants to target those large volume payments and more corridors over time. Okay, guys, you got to think. We're starting small and we're growing. Ripple is also growing as a company and they're targeting more and more corridors as the days, months go on. Let me go down here. It is also important that it is not terribly expensive to hold XRP. A higher price will mean that a similarly sized sell will produce less volatility, so a higher price could mean a lower cost to hold XRP as well. So long as XRP's general price direction is up, the volatility can be hedged without much difficulty. So in this future, David Schwartz imagines an XRP price ultimately trending upward being a high price to target those higher payments without much volatility. So essentially quite stable, maybe stable in around the, I don't know, $589 mark. Not sure exactly. He doesn't outline it for us specifically, but this is always the best example. And I love going back to this. When Bitcoin sold for $1, you couldn't really use them to buy or sell a house. Now that Bitcoin is trading at whatever price it is today, 9,900 or 9,300, whatever it is, you can actually use Bitcoin to buy a house. And this is the theory they're using with Ripple. The higher higher price the XRP, the larger the payments Ripple can target. And there's this issue too about holding XRP and how it's expensive. Also, uh, the fact that uh, Josh Lin here mentions the fact that uh, there is still lawsuits going on. So the XR, or rather the SEC has to rule XRP in a certain way so that it is a cryptocurrency that can legally be held by financial institutions and that we're still waiting on. So some food for thought here, guys. Alex Beattie here on Twitter. The important thing about XRP is that if it moons up to $5 tomorrow, people will still be buying it because we all know 15, 25, and even $100 is possible and it will happen. If XRP moves up to $5, what's to make you think that the same thing won't happen that did with Bitcoin? 
People will see it move up, they'll buy more of it, they'll keep pushing it up. And even in a spec market, even if XRP tends to crash, let's say XRP goes up to $30, and then crashes right back down to five. Well, you and I who have bought at 30 cents, 20 cents, heck, maybe 11 cents. We're all into money, the same as these Bitcoin maximalists are into money because they bought Bitcoin when it was maybe 100 or 50 or even $10 per BTC. Some things you need to remember here, and guys, how many people is David Schwartz following on Twitter? Coincidence? Yes or no? I personally think this could be an attempt for him to troll us a little bit, nevertheless, I wanted to mention it because it leads me into my next and final portion of the video. Uh, XRP Italy here says, Hey, so bearable guy 123 changed his background pick into a snowball that is in the shape of a stop sign. Can you make another bearable guy video, please? Uh, well, there's not enough here really to make a bearable guy video, but I am going to touch on this in this video. So thanks so much uh, at Italy XRP on Twitter for mentioning this. I did not notice this. So there is an XRP snowball shaped as a stop sign. We know what the snowball effect means for XRP. We know that XRP has gotten the ball rolling and will get the ball rolling for other financial institutions and governments, lawmakers, to acknowledge its existence and to perhaps create more crypto-friendly legislation and companies will feel more warm to it and, you know, XRP or Ripple rather will be able to take on SWIFT more effectively. But the stop sign, my only thought here is that could the brakes have been halted on Ripple's efforts and essentially on XRP adoption? At least halted for now. It seems counterintuitive, especially in this global pandemic, but, you know, governments of the world are really worried about so many other things right now. They have shelved so much order of business. As I can attest to, my brother-in-law works for a regional government here where I live, and, uh, you know, they have shifted gears. They have gone totally beer flu focused, kind of forgotten about everything else, and they're going to get back to it. But in the meantime, could this have happened with XRP? Is this what Bearable Guy is hinting at? The brakes have been pumped for now. But once this is all said and done, we will be going back to business as usual. You think that's what it is? I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.